If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We can begin this question by writing down the values that were given to us in the problem. Because the merry-go-round started its motion from rest, we know that the initial angular velocity is zero radians per second. We were directly told the angular acceleration, and then the angular displacement is also given to us in part A as two revolutions. Now, we have to convert the two revolutions into the standard unit of radians, so let's take a look at that. We know that one revolution corresponds to two pi radians, and if we set up the conversion in this manner, we can see that the revolutions will cancel, giving us four pi radians. We can next look at the equations of rotational kinematics. Now part A is asking us how long it takes, so of course that's a time. You might want to pause the video and see if you can figure out which of these equations would work best. And after doing so, hopefully you end up picking the second equation. So why don't we write that equation down and then solve for the time t. Now we again note that the initial angular velocity was zero radians per second. So when we plug zero into this term right here, that's going to eliminate it from the equation. So now we can solve for the time t by multiplying both sides by two, dividing by alpha, alpha, excuse me, and taking the square root. And then we can proceed to plug in the known values. And when we simplify that, we can see that the time turns out to be roughly 4.09 seconds. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now to solve part B, it turns out that we can use a sort of clever approach to doing that. Remember, we just figured out the time to get up to the first two revolutions. This question is asking us for the next two revolutions. So in total, the merry-go-round would have traveled four revolutions. So that would be our angular displacement. Once again, we need to convert the four revolutions to radians by multiplying by two pi. And so we would have eight pi radians. What we'll do is actually use the same approach to calculate the time. I've denoted the time as t sub one just to distinguish it from the other time that we had calculated. So let's do that. Let's take the same approach and calculate this unknown time to reach a total of eight pi radians. Here is the same equation that we derived earlier for the time. We'll go ahead and plug in the new angular displacement. And the angular acceleration is a constant, so we'll use the same value of 1.5. Now, when we calculate this time, we get approximately 5.789 seconds. And so, to get the time required to go for the next two revolutions, we're going to subtract. But just to make that clear, we'll show the following timeline. Recall from part A of the question that it took the merry-go-round just over four seconds to spin the first two revolutions. And then we just figured out that it takes a total of 5.789 seconds to go a full four revolutions. The question in part B really wants to know the time to go from the first two revolutions to the next two revolutions. So we're really looking for this time and all we have to do of course is subtract these two times to get that value. And when we do so we get roughly 1.70 seconds. So this is the correct answer to part B. Again, the time it takes to move from the first two revolutions to the next two revolutions. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to this email address and I will do my best to answer it on